In this video, I'm going to talk about constructors, destructors, the object lifecycle. You can read about it in the book. Words can get a little confusing. So for this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the very simplified examples. So when you're working on your indie game in C++, pretty much everything is an object. You might have a scene, which is a, which is a separate object on its own. You might have a bunch of playable characters inside your scene. I'm just going to call them character playable or non-playable, doesn't matter. You might also have items, weapons, etc. Every one of them is an object. And this very concept sort of reflects our human language. Let me get my MS Paint. So you might have your home in real life. This is a single object. You might also have trees outside your home, which is another object. Inside your home, you might have TVs. You might have your microwave. You might have chairs and tables. Every one of these is an object. And inside your TV, you might have a bunch of components that make up the TV, and every one of them is an object. And you might say a TV is a home appliance. A microwave is also a home appliance. You can say that the very concept of home appliance is an object. This is just how our brain works. We pretty much see everything as individual objects. Even concepts and ideas can be individual objects. Now, in C++, we have something called the object lifecycle. Now, don't get caught up with the words and the names of it. It just means there's a beginning and an end. In the beginning, we have memory allocation. And at the end, when you're done using a class, you have deallocation. If you haven't watched video number one, please go watch it. Because memory allocation just means you're reserving a certain amount of ones and zeros so that you can express whatever values you want within those ones and zeros. Again, don't get caught up too much with the words. All this means is that Every object has life and death. And let's dig a little deeper. In the beginning, we have something called constructors. And you can guess that at the end, we have something called destructors. And whatever your class does happens in between. In your code, it looks like this. For the scene constructor, we use this syntax. For the destructor, we use this syntax. And they're usually public. This is one of very important features in object-oriented programming. Usually in the beginning, you do basic setup, and then at the end, you clean up everything and close shop. So whatever your class does, it has to happen within its own life cycle. Let's think of an example. To simplify this, we're not going to set up anything. Instead, I'm just going to say C out. Scene is created. And at the end, I'm just going to say scene is destroyed. Inside our main, I'm going to declare a scene. And I'm just going to run this, F5. And here we see the life cycle of our scene. It gets created, and it gets destroyed. Now let's do a little debugging. I'm going to set breakpoints right here in the beginning, also inside the constructor and the destructor, and at the end. Let's see what happens. OK, this is the beginning of our app. I'm going to press F10. And as we declare the scene, our constructor is called F10, F10. Now we're at the end of the main function. If I press F10 one more time, we now go into the destructor. It's a fairly simple concept. When you declare a scene like this, constructor is called in the beginning. And at the end of the function, which the class is in here, destructor is called. There are many different ways to allocate memory. And we'll go deeper into memory in some other videos. For now, let's just think of another example. I'm going to have a function inside a scene. I'm going to call it create character. And inside the function, we're going to create a character. And just like our scene, the character is going to have a constructor. Character is created. And the destructor character is destroyed. Let me make this public. And just to be clear, I'm going to see out character creation function. And back in our main, I'm going to say scene create character. 
And let's see what happens when I run this, F5. We can see that the character lifecycle is here within the character creation function, and the scene's lifecycle is here. In our code, this is where the character lifecycle is. Once you're outside this function, this character doesn't exist. Just like what we saw with our main, the destructor for this character gets called at the end of the function. Now, again, this is not the only way to declare something. Later, we might decide that we want to have the destructor called somewhere else. We might want to do that manually, and we'll talk about that in other videos. Try debugging this yourself and see where the constructor and the destructor happens. Okay, that's your homework assignment. Try debugging this and try to find out where each of these things happen. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.